Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. In an update to a story The Real News has been following closely, Boeing workers in Washington State voted last week to approve a new contract that includes significant concessions around their pensions plans starting in 2016. By narrow margin, members of the Seattle area machinist union voted to accept the new contract after Boeing threatened to take the production of its new 777X aircraft out of the state. This is Machinist Local 751 spokesperson Connie Kelleher reacting to the vote on Bloomberg TV. Um, the vote was placed on a day when nearly a third of our members were on vacation. It was announced after many had already left on the holiday break. Um, we heard over the weekend many of them are calling for a recount or a revote. Uh, the fact is it passed by a very narrow margin, but not even half of the members had voted to approve it, and that would be the smallest majority we've ever had to approve something that has long-term ramifications for our membership. Now joining us to discuss this is Mike Elk. He's a staff writer for In These Times. His recent piece is Obama administration stays quiet as Boeing strikes major blow to pensions. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be on the show. So Mike, um, talk about your reaction to the vote. Uh, it wasn't a popular vote um, for the machinist. It was approved by a very narrow margin. And what this means for pensions for, for workers around the country. Yeah, it's obviously not a very popular vote, and it means very bad things for what's happening with pensions in this country. Um, under the Obama administration, the last of the remaining corporations that offered uh, defined benefit pension plans, which are much less risky than 401ks, which workers have to invest in the stock market, uh, have eliminated them entirely. Uh, we've seen uh, General Electric do this. We've seen Honeywell do it. We've seen Verizon. And now we've seen Boeing, uh, a major U.S. corporation. And, and typically what happens is that employers follow the lead of other employers. And the machinist union up there in Seattle was one of the tougher unions around. They've been on a strike in 2005, a strike in 2008. Uh, so this was a very tough union, and they were able to get these concessions out of them. And part of this was that the international union, over the objections of the local union leadership, pushed this vote. Uh, why they pushed it, it's unclear. Um, but, you know, right now, uh, uh, the president of the IAM, IAM, the machinist, is facing a big leadership challenge, and this is one of the big issues, is, is why were they pushing this over the objection of the workers that actually work there? Uh, so they pushed this vote. Um, the governor of Washington State, was also very supportive of this vote, passed by only a few hundred votes. And it's important to note they, po they, they pushed it two days after the holidays, and they announced it last second. Uh, so now a number of machinists are, are challenging it, uh, so there might be another vote even. Uh, but this is obviously a very troubling sign. And I think in more and more union negotiations, uh, we're going to see even more of an acceleration of the trend of asking for the elimination of defined pensions now that a union as tough as the one in Boeing gave in. So you mentioned the Obama administration, uh, Democratic administration. The uh, w Washington state recently voted to give Boeing another massive tax break, totaling nearly $9 billion, also controlled by the Democrats. Um, and you mentioned this, the union, the, the international union leadership kind of pushing this contract. Um, what does this say about uh, Democratic politics today and, and large unions and their leadership? And, and com comparing their interests to that of, of working people. Well, you know, I think it's a, a classic case of business unionism, of leaders that think they know what's better than their members, as opposed to asking their members who are actually going to take the contract what kind of risk they want to take. And I think we see that a lot with the Democratic Party, is that we see these uh, elite relationships. Uh, President Obama has said nothing uh, about this situation here, uh, nothing at all. Uh, he said nothing about the loss of financials over the period of his administration, even though a massive number of corporations have seek to eliminate them for workers. Uh, instead, uh, the president goes around and he jokes in public that Boeing should give him a gold watch because he's the top salesman. Now, President Obama wants to be an advocate for Boeing. I think a lot of uh, advocates of workers like Dean Baker and others uh, would say that President Obama should also be an advocate for employees. But I think as Dean Baker brings up in my article and other people bring up, the Obama administration just really does not care about retirement security. It's focused on an elite agenda of its own. Uh, indeed, instead of trying to shore up retirement security, Obama administration pushing change CPI, uh, which would be essentially a cut, according to the AFL-CIO. And some of the responses I've seen online uh, to this vote was that, you know, it wasn't that bad. The workers traded some, um, some pension benefits for job security. Uh, what's your response to that? 
I mean, I think it's uh, up to the folks that got to live under that contract. But I think at the end of the day that it's going to be bad because, you know, they're asking for this now. What are they going to ask for in the future? Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of problems. Mike Elk, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jess Lenore. Thank you so much for joining us.